அனைவருக்கும் என்னுடைய அன்பார்ந்த மதிய வணக்கம் மை கிரீட்டிங்ஸ் டு ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ போஸ்ட் லைன் செஷன் செஷன் நம்பர் ஒன் இட்ஸ் கிரேட் கேதரிங் மேபி த ஆர்கிடெக்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஃபியூச்சர் இந்தியா தி ஆர்கிடெக்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் நியூ இந்தியா யூஆர் லீடர்ஸ் இன் யுவர் ஓன் ரைட் டூயிங் கிரேட் திங்ஸ் ரன்னிங் அமேசிங் கம்பெனிஸ் எம்ப்ளாயிங் லாட்ஸ் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் இஃப் இந்தியா பீப்புள் ஆர் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் கிரேட் பொட்டென்ஷியல் அண்ட் ஆஃபிங் it is because of many people sitting in this room that world looks at india very differently now we are living in india century for the next 25 years it's a great privilege to be part of this forum to talk to you and i'm very sure uh, leadership by its very nature is very unique every person can come to this mic he can talk about this leadership or her leadership and uh, very different points will come out but i think i've been invited here to talk about uh, my journey in the last uh, one decade or so and probably take out some things which i felt is right for me which i think could be useful to you and probably put it out on the forum i once again thank you ivo koyambattur for inviting me and uh, yoga prakash ji for the very gracious introduction and uh, people who put this concept together uh, for two day conclave starting here where it is enriching your brain and tomorrow in uh, isha koyambattur where it is uh, a spiritual awakening it is going to be for most of you especially for the people who are going through for the first time and experiencing shivratri in isha especially under the velingiri hills uh, friends like most of you i was also very clueless till about 2025 what to do with life trying to experiment a bit here experiment a bit there trying to see the world as it is trying to see where do i fit into this world uh, do i fit in here do i fit in there how can i maximize what i want to do but coming from a small village uh, in karur district which had about 30 houses the first 20 years is more about a village life you don't get that much opportunity to go out and see the world at class 12 if somebody had asked me what do i want to become i was very clear i wanted to become an engineer if somebody has asked me why do i want to become an engineer i was very clear i don't want to be a doctor because i can't study that much engineering looked to be an easier option for me that is the maximum kind of mental uh, exposure i had But again for engineering where do you want to study what do you want to study no answers just go to the counseling see the seats wherever it is opening up take that seat go and study that's how i landed in coimbatore because a friend of mine who studied 12 standard with me got a college here phd tech so i thought i'll also get phd tech took a seat i didn't even know what i wanted to study I came to mechanic that is how i defined my first uh, 20 21 years of life just sailing the way the life was taking me there but college life i always believe is the time when we start experimenting we start questioning it exposure is more it opens up too much to us five years spent in coimbatore made me very clear that i don't want to be an engineer very funnily at 12th class i wanted to be an engineer because i felt this is the easiest route i don't want to be a doctor five years spending in coimbatore was very clear i don't want to be an engineer i could do anything apart from being an engineer i took a break after my engineering when all the classmates around me they were able to get a job 100% placements able to go settle down somewhere but some way I, i took some courage from my heart i said this one year is going to be the defining year for me let me take this year out travel see people meet people talk to people try and find what do i really want uh, that should be something in my heart which i haven't discovered till now let me try and find what it is that one year is possibly the greatest one year in my last 38 years after i was born which taught me so many things which told me this is the direction i have to take then later i went to rakesh ji's uh, hometown lucknow to do my mba then seeing lucknow coming from a state like tamil nadu and seeing lucknow in 2008 and that was a big shocker to me conservative state going there uh, such a huge population seeing poverty it made me to question a lot of my life's values what i want to be i want to to be some kind of an entrepreneur in between after the break i took wanted to start a company employ people give uh, livelihood to a lot of people possibly work at the ground level in a much more stabilized way but going to lucknow taught me the service of life is much bigger it's much greater the life's calling is somewhere lying there in the hinterlands of india which took me slowly to civil service 9 years as a cop as they said i was a dcp bangalore then i chose to quit and now in politics so this is what i thought i'll cover in the next 20 minutes then possibly any questions you have i'll, I'll take uh, in the next 20 minutes they've given me 45 minutes time uh, sir and uh, ladies here i i firmly believe life is of two components before it becomes a larger life the first component i would say is about the inward journey where we all are forced to take that inward journey 
it could be the first 20 years 25 years knowingly unknowingly we all take that inward journey that is the time many of our qualities characters and attitudes get polished and uh, we learn we get exposed many of the things that we are taught are put to test we might say this is wrong this is right this is workable this is not workable once that inward journey happens then the external journey happens the second journey maybe starts at 25 30 depending on which stages of life we are it starts with work it starts with first employment it starts with the company where you serve others you you start paying somebody or you you start taking money from somebody you make a product 20 years you go sell it out you you do all sorts of things then i believe once the inward journey is complete once the external journey is complete then possibly we start looking at bigger things in life many things don't matter to us we start looking at life very differently we start looking at poverty very differently we start looking at people around us very differently we start looking at every single thing that has made us till then we start looking at things very differently possibly i would say i am somewhere between my finished my inward journey and possibly at the last five end of my external journey and probably looking at everything that was brought me here in a way with a very different sets of eyes and lens maybe in the inward journey when somebody talks about external journey we might not appreciate it understand it because we are too clouded in what we do in life things matter to us material things matter to us we want to do it at that point of time possibly when we are in the external journey of about 20 years again many things don't matter to us that is why when i started i said the spiritual awakening that might happen to you tomorrow in isha under uh, the amavasya day uh, where lakhs of people gather there you find that energy i am sure that might open up the spiritual eye to many of you it might push you in that external journey very faster the policing life for me was that external journey till then what i did was more the internal i wanted to things for myself i wanted to do this because i couldn't do that i wanted to come to coimbatore because it's a better college my my friend chose to go there then i took that break because i didn't want to do this i wanted to do something great something big where i can make a difference in the world but never knew what it was and it was more about that discovery policing again was a choice that i carefully made that i wanted to do this the nine years that i spent as a police officer in different parts of karnataka coastal karnataka the southern part the bangalore the cosmopolitan every single day was an awakening every single day was a challenge because normally when you confront death on a daily basis many of the things that you see about life you start questioning it fate you question it you ask why did this guy die why did not that guy die this guy was at the wrong place wrong time so he died this guy was at the right place right time so he didn't die especially in the case of accidents and murders and all sorts of horrible things that happened in our life as a police officer you confronted for 9 years though you are happy you are doing justice though you are happy that you are solving cases though you are happy that you are part of the larger criminal justice system but there comes a time when you ask yourself the question why do crimes happen in the first place is there a way i can solve those crime or make sure the crimes don't happen in the first place so that shifted me away from policing towards a foundation towards politics where i think i can make sure i can create a better world i can create a world where the human potential is fully realized the country's potential is fully realized for many people they keep asking me the question rakesh ji was asking me why did you get into became a cop and why did you quit cop and why did why are, what are you doing now politics and everything this is the answer that i can give i'm not sure many people are not convinced i am also very sure that many people are convinced but this is what i am as i said leadership journey is very innate to us it's all certain qualities that we have based on the exposure and everything i think you are also in a way lucky because we are having this conversation at the age and time when we can change a lot of things that belongs to us the mindset the attitude lot of things that we can change because the mind is always churning the inward journey is always churning so that that is pushing you to the external journey that is also churning that will push you to a larger things that is why when we see entrepreneurs in india also my one of my dear friends sridhar vembu who runs zoho when i asked him the other day what motivated him to come leave us and everything and come and uh, set up a shop in tenkasi he said look i finished this i've done this whatever needs to be achieved i've achieved it now i see life very differently i see poverty very differently i see village life very differently i see tier 2 city very differently i was very surprised both of us are in different parts of journey i am a very small man doing something in some part of the life and he is the so called big man in terms of money in terms of employment he is also doing something but some of the life is miraculously converging for both of us we are at different points of time in terms of age but both of us are looking at life in a very similar spectrum so that made us friends 
we make it a point to meet whenever is available in chennai or when i make it a point to go to tenkasi to have that life conversation with them one thing i've realized anybody who consciously does his inward journey acquire whatever things he want to acquire for him and consciously does that external journey also both when it when it merges then the big thing in life happens where your life really is in the service of people who matter to you so i really hope and pray that many entrepreneurs who are here you might create billion dollar companies give employments to thousand in the coming years coming months coming decades in the coming century but there is a certain point of time where i hope and pray that it converges with the country it converges with the path the country is taking it converges with the population of this great nation who might want you in different roles at different points of time your experience i hope and pray it all happens for you at certain points of time that is our vision prayer and it is also great at a very young age as i said you are part of this great forum where you get to meet all very varieties and different sets of people you get to meet billionaires you get to meet ngo people you get to meet people like me you get to meet people like you who are in a startup journey maybe running a company 100 million 200 million 300 million whatever is the valuation it is good when you get this kind of exposure lot of churning happens to you and probably you will try and seek what you actually wanted to be i was reading a very interesting uh, book recently where they said the american presidents from john f kennedy till the senior bush the seven american presidents out of that six presidents served in world war 2 and one president was also a war president seven presidents were uniform so the arc of america the greatness of america it started from john f kennedy the second the world war 2 generation probably we call the best generation of the americans it reached possibly its peak by the george bush generation then possibly it started coming down because of wars and this and that the moral issues and everything in that very interesting book very beautifully they have narrated normally when people sit in this highest position of power where they decide a country's trajectory where they try and do what they want to do it is that experience in serving for others that makes them to make better decisions so the book was particularly very very fascinating analysis from kennedy era then it went to different presidential era then the jimmy carter era then it went to the george bush era overall they are trying to weave a narrative that people who achieve certain positions where they are supposed to serve the society before that they start putting them in the service of others that is why many countries they have designed that one two three years you serve in the army you serve in some cadet crops or you serve somewhere and possibly that will make you a well rounded individual when you come out at 45 50 55 when you start occupying positions of power use that responsibly now we took about 70 years for us post independence to bring this agni path now agni path to make the army as a three year business you go there you train for one and a half years you serve for three years total four and a half five years you are out you come at 21 22 which means every year 90000 people who get selected and you retain about 1/4 of them in the army which is about 22500 all the 67500 people every year they come out of the army one and a half years of service and three years of practice four and a half years you get this many people imagine two years it is going to be almost 1 lakh 35000 imagine 20 years it is going to be 13 lakh this kind of people are getting back into the society the expectation is they will occupy positions of power it could be a business organization it could be even a rotary club it could be a lines club it could be a local parent teacher association chapter president they go and occupy all these different forums across india just imagine the kind of orbit india is getting into the problem we have is the quality of public leadership the private leadership is fantastic in our country which is growing on its own learning from a different era when we wanted everything when you are looking at the west for everything some of the private business leadership of india is on a great trajectory that is why in the fortune 500 companies we have 70 leaders in the in the world out of 500 who are indian origin the top guys just yesterday you open it youtube see was going to be some guy every week you open it is going to be an indian origin guy probably studied a school year studied a college year probably did his masters in us but some of the formative years was in india so private leadership is fantastic but if you look at the public leadership it's horrible you can't have one narendra modi one prime minister sitting in delhi to change the fortunes of this country the public leadership means the councillors the panchayat presidents the public leadership means people who sit in very influential positions across close to about 14 15 lakh elected positions in india that is very horrible you find people without moral character people without true north compass they all sits in all these kinds of things 
but somehow all this people they drive 80% of the country as a private player whatever you do you have a certain influence on the employees that you have maybe a thousand maybe 10000 maybe a lakh beyond that you might have your influence in the circle but the public leadership is is the big task that we have for the next 25 years when the honorable prime minister calls our nation in the next 25 years it is going to be the amrit call of india starting from 2022 till about 2047 25 years he says we are going to do lot of great things miraculous things uh, 11th in the economic size in 2014 we are five now very soon we should overtake uh, uh, germany and japan we should go to three then possibly 20 35 40 early 40s we should overtake china then possibly china or us was number 1 2047 yes put a marker that we are there we would be the number one country in the world in terms of the numbers but to reach there i personally believe it is the public leadership that matters people who sit in influential positions right from your chairman right from your panchayat president right from your councillor right up to the prime minister that is the challenge we have in front of us the young people like many of you should take public service as a calling after a point of time whenever you believe your external journey starts at 35 at 40 at 38 i don't know whatever is the time that is comfortable when the trigger happens you all should look at public service as a calling and possibly public service also for 10 to 20 years you all fight for that post you wanted this you wanted that you want to be an mla you want to be an mp whatever it is then possibly after a point of time the bigger things start happening where your ego is not there it is almost dissolved you you completely merge with yourself you want to do what is right for the country so this is the key challenge i see in terms of private thing there's nothing to say the leadership is fantastic truly potential country great numbers we are doing whatever numbers we are doing it we are doing very very great that is why eo coimbatore when somebody has written in that um, whatsapp chat what do you want to learn from this somebody said i want to learn the india's growth story i'm sure it is either a friend from uae or gatamela or somebody who has come from abroad they are thinking what is india's growth story suddenly this country that was like a beggar in the us where we wanted the wheat in 1969 70 or 1991 the crisis we had we went to bank of england and got the gold at different point of time we are looking at countries across the world for us suddenly this country is dabbling in world affairs the french president wants india to negotiate between russia and ukraine and uh, a president from south america he thinks india un and one more country should negotiate between russia and ukraine and 470 planes ordered 3 days back for air india where at the same meeting the american president sitting in one part of the meeting appreciating the honorable prime minister for placing an order 220 planes to boeing and within 30 minutes you have the french president in the next meeting with our honorable pm appreciating our pm and the air india for placing the second order of 250 airbus orders so everywhere you are seeing it is not about generating employment in our country now we are looking at generating employment in other countries 470 planes it's five to seven year deal you are generating employment in us generating employment in france everybody is looking this as india's century so definitely we are doing well leadership wise private entrepreneurial energy wise the only problem i foresee is the public leadership that we have for that not enough good quality mentally agile morally apt and more importantly ramrod straight honest people some of they are not looking public service as an option this really worries our country this really worries lot of us because the current politics is designed only to be incremental it can only do 0.5% it can only do 1% it can only do 2% but right now india needs a big a big explosion in the public leadership as well the mindset change the shift in thinking the the big box thinking thinking outside the box thinking the whole economy has to be thought in a very different way because that is one thing they have, they have told me also do you think tamil nadu is regressing somebody has uh, written in the paper that that i have to talk today if you look at rakesh ji's uh, uh, state up napoleon bonaparte once said never wake up china if china wake up the world will tremble allow china to sleep so there was a very conscious strategy we kept in the world to allow china to sleep for a long time so that china did not create any trouble for us china got woken up after the cultural revolution you all know what happened in the last 60 70 years the same thing applied for up for a long time post independence the unsaid rule was never allow up to wake up let it sleep now as a state with 20 24.5 crore population woken up 11 functioning airports six lane eight lane expressways where a fighter jet lands the number of startups registered in 2022 more than tamil nadu you are number 2 in the country before tamil nadu we are number 
the per capita gst collection you have jumped six places in the last one year and the number of girls going for higher education you have jumped 15 percentage point in the last three years if you look at the numbers across the country with some states you look at it is staring in the eye what is happening in some states the miraculous transformation they're doing the potential they are generating and who is going to hit that one trillion dollar economy as a state as a country we are 3.1 trillion dollar is it the maharashtra is it the up is it tamil nadu which state is going to hit so that innovate excites me delights me as an indian because up is kicking doing better it worries me as a tamilian where are we now even now the if you go to the public conversation is about whether north indian should enter tamil nadu whether they should be kept outside tamil nadu that is a public conversation that is right now happening in one of the by elections in our state now this is supposedly the top 3 major conversation should north indians be inside should they be in tirupur should they be in here look at the quality of thinking what are we thinking now when other countries are thinking in terms of rocket science in terms of chat gbt what you are talking of we are talking about whether north indian should come take our jobs and all those things so this is a point of concern and we have to do much much better that is because the quality of public service in tamil nadu has hit the rock bottom and elections which we say the pinnacle of democracy where we want people to vote for better leaders to sit in positions of power when when we have average leaders again you see again right now the friends are here if you see the election happening in tamil nadu especially in erode where a by election is happening you see 1000 rupee per day 2000 rupee per day probably this election would be the costliest election in indian history after 1947 where the cost of each voter is approximated anywhere between 15000 to 22000 so the total money paid for the vote the total money spent during the canvassing so where are we heading so this will go out whatever you do as a great man you want to start a business if somebody is asking you to pay 20% cut money to start your startup in tamil nadu ups over taken us because to do a thing you want a 20% cut money when when will it happen so i hope and pray the important leaders my time for 20 minutes is over the leader sitting in this room inward journey outward journey whichever journey you are in there is this journey that is much more important than both the journeys where it converges you start seeing a larger picture where our life is put in the service of our country we start doing things without ego we start merging ourselves with our country where we help our people even now the extreme poverty in india is still one less than 1% but it is still there many people go to bed hungry it is still there it is not that we have come out of the woods we are talking of reaching us 25 years from now but the us per capita income is at 65000 we are at 2900 dollars now just imagine 30 times leap we have to do in the next 25 years lot of things to do lot of things to catch up but to do that it is important that quality leadership slowly start shifting from the private sector to the public sector at different points of time where you start taking a call you start competing for post it could be a panchayat president it could be a councillor it could be something apart from your day job before i end i would like to end with uh, a very famous uh, quote that 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 is more like my moral compass i have theodore roosevelt uh, left american presidency in 1909 in 1910 he wrote a very beautiful uh, essay called citizenship and republic and uh, this essay's name you might not recollect but if i can say the word the man in the arena many of you might know the theodore roosevelt's man in the arena quote where he says who matters in this world who matters as a citizen he says it is not the man who is a critic who matters it is a not a man who keeps commenting on the strong man when he fumbles they don't matter it is not the man who keeps commenting on the doer of deeds he doesn't matter he says he further argues who matters is the man who gets into the arena takes the mud starts the fight with the sweat with the blood and who doesn't belong to the timid and the cold souls and for whom it is equally important either he is he knows victory or he knows defeat but not the spectator who sits outside who neither knows victory nor knows defeat i think that is important to our country now though it was written in 1910 good 112 years before but we need players in the arena not worried about system just go there fight it out over a point of time victory comes system will get better defeat comes the system will get better that is one thing as a politician i want to leave this message out to you young politician should come in uh, uh, some of the some of the greatest changes in the world has happened because young people have thought differently greta thunberg has thought differently malala yousuf has done has thought differently 
the black lives matter who started as less than 30 years age the me too movement less than 35 years age so these are the people who are changing the world in terms of revolutionized thinking so young people can bring that thing out of the box we can change the world but provided that we also step out and look at larger things in life especially a public service where you come you make that little incremental difference here and there so that by 2047 we achieve what we intend to do so thank you so much uh, for inviting me i'm not sure whether i spoke what you wanted to hear but this is something that is in the heart for me for a long time that inward outward journey you hope you realize it at some point of time and you look at the l- larger picture where both resonate converge and then your your service of life becomes service of people where the ego is absolutely not there and probably the country benefits from all the exposure you had all the education you had all the great things you have done this point of time thank you so much jai hind